so often we don't expect to be challenged either in our career or we're pushed, but that's growth, right? When we're uncomfortable, that means you're growing. And I think that that's the best way to be. When we're stagnant, you know, that's just, we're a yucky pond. What's going on? You're listening to episode 78 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is about carving out time to build something for yourself, and I want to share what is and isn't working for me along with sharing my guest point of view. This platform also allows me to cast the spotlight and celebrate those creating big waves in the community through interviews and a weekly dose of inspiration in the outro, so stick around because it could be you. Now, I know you can relate to this. Some days, you just lack the spark. You know, that feeling or reason that gets you stoked to jump out of the bed and work on shit that lights your soul on fire. Often, it's hard to see the gold we have buried within us. The inner critic blinds us for catching a glimpse of our future potential. Sometimes, having an outside voice of reason can help break through that wall and give you the needed push to light that spark again. Sometimes you just need a champion or a cheerleader in your corner. While it may not be easy to be your own champion, you always have the ability to champion someone else. People appreciate being appreciated. I know I continue to keep saying that, but it's so true. You never know the impact you can have on someone by spending a few moments of your existence to pepper them with a verbal pat on the back. Maybe it's just my background of coaching as I've had some asshole coaches in my past who would just destroy my confidence whenever I played sports. It's shown me the power of building someone up to help them perform at their best. Someone who is a champion for creatives and does so much for our industry is my good friend Diane Gibbs. There's an endless list of reasons why Diane deserves recognition as She molds our future generation as a professor. She has the biggest and upcoming names share their stories on her weekly design recharge show. She organizes and hosts events for creatives through her AIGA Mobile chapter in Alabama. And she volunteers her time to help provide an incredible experience for people at Creative South. I could keep going, but honestly, Perspective Collective would not be where it's at today without Diane. True story. After writing shitty blog posts for almost a year, Diane offered me one of the biggest breakthroughs of my life when she asked me to be a keynote at a conference she was hosting in Alabama. It scared me to death as doing your first talk in front of over 100 people isn't easy, but reluctantly and thankfully I said yes. That opportunity jump-started my speaking career, which then got me into teaching workshops and most importantly, starting this podcast. Diane is a champion for creatives like you and me. I'm absolutely honored to have this brilliant woman on the show, and I know you're going to love her as much as I do. You can find the show notes to this episode containing Diane's amazing work and all the resources we chat about at perspective-collective.com slash 78. If you think someone can find value in this episode, please give it a share on social media. It's because of your word of mouth that the show keeps growing and you know I love you for it. Finally, if you catch some inspiration from the show, create some work and tag me at Perspective Podcast on Instagram. I'll give it a share where I post each week's episode artwork and make sure you get some credit. Let's get into the show. Today, I'm joined by one of my best friends in the creative industry, Diane Gibbs. Diane, how are you doing? And are you fully recovered from Creative South yet? I am not fully recovered. Um, I have taken a nap every day except yesterday. I'm jealous. Are you recovered? I've been forced to get recovered just because of the day job and catching up on podcasts. And there's we've been doing baby room stuff nonstop. So I, I, I can't. I can't not pick myself back up and get back to old Scotty. But it, earlier in the week, I was hurting. I couldn't get up early at all. I was sleeping in for sure. Well, I'm, I'm yesterday. I didn't take a nap, but I'm like, I just have crashed. I've just been like, I can't go. And I had some deadlines this week. So it was kind of like, you know, you're just trying to make it through. 
for those in the audience who don't know, can you please give us a brief Wikipedia page summary about yourself and the crooked path that's gotten you to where you are today? Okay, so Scotty, you know me from Design Recharge. So I am a designer. I've been a designer since 96, officially. I guess that's when I graduated. That's 1996, not 1896 for anybody who just thinks I'm really old. Um, anyway, so I've been a designer. I have my own firm, but I'm also a professor at the University of South Alabama. And then I do a podcast in, called Design Recharge. And I've spoken at conferences. And I just love to love on people and serve the design community. So I want to connect as many people as I can. Well, speaking of Design Recharge, what's the why behind it, the premise, and how long have you been crushing this show? Because it's been going for a while. How many episodes are you on now? 254. Whew, damn. I know, so it's a lot. Yeah, you're 78 for me, so I'm playing massive catch-up. But you're going to be on, and so I have tried to do, and you and I have had many conversations about podcasts, and there are so much that we have even more to talk about, I know. But so with I started in 2012, I um, applied for a job at my alma mater, Auburn University, which I still love Auburn. They did not even give me an interview. And I was like, oh, man, you know, I you can take this as being like, woe is me. They, you know, and like really hate on them. But I did not like I'm like, OK, well, I don't ever want that to happen to me again. Um, and so I was like, I need to do something. I was working um, doing my freelance business and I was doing, um, teaching and it was really hard. I didn't have a lot of time. There was no AIGA or creative kind of outlet, a group of community in Mobile, Alabama, where I live at the time. And so I wanted to create this kind of community just so that I would be able to talk to people and get something out of them on a regular basis and so that it would feed me. And it has, so this 2012, so it'll be six years in June. I had like a prelim episode in May. So I always think of May as like the real start, but it was, I started on a platform called Spreecast. Um, I know you've been on it, maybe not on Spreecast one, but pretty much I always wanted it to be live. One, I didn't want to have to edit it. So there's no editing of mine. It works. It works. But one thing I like is I wanted people to come along with me. I wanted somebody else to be able to be there live. And to me, that was really critical. And I've thought about, oh, well, could I change? Should I change? But I really still feel like that community aspect is really important. So it's we pretty much tape at the same time every week. It's 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. And you come, you get a link, and you come, and then you can ask questions while I'm asking questions. So I send the questions to the my people that are on my list the night before, and then they can kind of determine whether or not they want to come um, and listen in. or And a lot of people just listen in after. You know, they, they can't take off an hour at work. But I tried to do it, like, at lunchtime. And if you're on East Coast, it's really late lunch. And see, for me, it's like I have weekly meetings at this time now. I never get to make it anymore. But for people who I think there's such an awesome aspect of being in the live community environment, and it's just like a huge hangout. It's like a mini conference in there. So I want to plug it right now for you. Where can people go on your list to sign up so they can get notified and ask questions and be the first people to, you know, get a notification? Hey, chat's live. So recharging dot com. And that's why you for you. That's the best way to get on the list. And there's a blue box and you can just put your name and email and then I'll start emailing you. That is awesome. I think you should totally do that. And how do you go about connecting with people and what do you look for in a guest for the design recharge? Because I know a lot of people you have phone calls with people all the time, like so many people in the creative community, just chats and one on ones. You know, what's that spark that makes you want to get to know someone? So it's either something I've seen that I've been stalking this person for a while or and so in the beginning, you know, I I was on that Spreecast channel, like the whole thing was a whole bunch of people doing things like this. So they were learning about social media or people were talking about all kinds of things. Um, this one friend of mine who is a is an attorney in Orange County, California, he had like Seth Godin and Gary Vaynerchuk and all these people on his podcast. And then he would he has been on mine and he's like a amazing attorney in um, in, you know, Orange County. But to me, it was like. 
there's this wealth of people and I actually think everybody has something to teach everybody. It doesn't mean that I just have to have, you know, um, people who have been around for 50 years or, and sometimes those people kind of scare me a little bit, like intimidate me. Yeah. So I haven't made, I haven't ever asked Debbie Millman, but I would love to. Uh, but I asked like Robin Landa, who is, I use a ton of her books in my classes and she is the super nicest lady and she's written a ton of books. You know, just these people, it, it just goes to show you that they're just people. And so it's like, I've been following them. And if I see them at a conference or even it's just, I think that God puts people together. And so you just end up like at creative South, there was this guy, Will and him. And I mean, I kept seeing this guy all the time. He was not following me. This Will's from Columbia, South Carolina. And he was actually, he actually played football in college too. So you should connect with him. I need <laughs> to get you connected with him just because I think that you have that same kind of, he uh, blew out his knees. So it wasn't his back, but you kind of have that same sort of story. Creative jock hybrid. And he played for Lou Holtz. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So anyway, so he played at South Carolina. So good SEC school. That's, that's funny because that totally segues into this next question is that, you often talk about superpowers, and to me, it stands out that you have two, okay? I'm all about focusing on your strengths, and those two are you always have the ability and personality to make an instant connection with anyone. You, like, literally, you can talk to anyone. That's a gift. It's really hard for a lot of people. And two, you are a door builder and a door opener. You build doors for yourself and create opportunities, but you also create opportunities and open those doors for other people. So you have that gift for taking that connection and connecting them to someone just like you're trying to tell, do with me and Will. And you connect them with someone who can then provide them value for the next opportunity or to build an amazing relationship. Would you agree with both of these things? Yes. Has this always been so easy for you? And when did you realize it was a strength or was it other people telling you it was a strength? Uh, I think I've always known that the I could talk to anybody. Like I was a kid. I never made met a stranger. I talk to myself in the mirror. You know, <laughs> it, it's never I've never been alone. So that's never been an issue and sometimes, you know, I used to get ins in conduct. Did you, you get satisfactory or needs improvement? Did you ever get like that in grade school? Yeah. I don't remember the system of grading that it was. I was probably just S's for all superior, but I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, that's the only one I can remember is like and getting an S or something. So that was satisfactory to oh, us. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clearly satisfactory in then. Iowa, it's <laughs> superior. No, it's probably satisfactory. Honestly, I have no idea. I can't fully remember. All right. So um, I think that's another one of my superpowers is a mem my memory. And because I can remember something about someone, it allows me to connect them to someone else. And sometimes it's just, it's like that guy, Will, he just kept showing up. I was like, we need to go to lunch because otherwise I don't think that I would have been running into you so many times if we weren't supposed to go eat lunch. So me and two other or three other people went to lunch. And so I got to know him. I think it's just being open to those kind of opportunities. The same way with having somebody on the show, I'm not super strategic about it, to be honest. I'm not like, ooh, this person's really doing well. It's like if I see something that's really touched me or I've seen them struggle and then just totally sore. Like I love showing those hope stories. I think that that's what design recharge is really about. You have a really good eye for that too. Thanks. I, I owe you for sharing my story or letting me get my story out there. Like I owe you everything. I'm telling you, Scotty, when you should talk to me, I was like, oh my goodness, you, you have a hugely powerful story. And it was that you were willing to be vulnerable right? That you were willing to share, even though it was uncomfortable, you, you said, Hey, I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought I would get a job straight out. I thought I was, you know, better than what I was. And I knew that that's, those are things that a lot of people need because then you kind of got kicked down, but you knew you had worked hard. You knew you could work hard because of all the football stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So then you knew you had it in you, but this was just a different challenge, but you didn't expect to be challenged in this way. But often, so often we're expect, we don't expect to be challenged either 
in our career or we're pushed, but that's growth, right? Yeah. When we're uncomfortable, that means you're growing. And I think that that's the best way to be when we're stagnant. You know, that's just we're a yucky pond. And like one thing I'm, I'm scared of looking back each year, not seeing like I made measurable growth like that would terrify me is looking back and be like, damn, I'm in the same spot I was last year. Right. Oh, my gosh. This um, you turned me on to this podcast. Remember a long time ago you did the podcast that was like your top four. Top three podcasts to elevate your creative brand or something like yes. that. Man, you're really good at memory. Okay, I don't remember that. Those things, I just remember things, weird things about people, I guess. But you turned me on to Don Miller with StoryBrand. Well, I had read his books like when he was just a Christian author, right? But I hadn't read any of his business stuff. And his business stuff is like phenomenal. And it's really changed the way I look at my business. And it's changed me. It allows me to be strategic. And I think when you're a designer, if you're just doing design, you're missing out on the way to really scale your business. I think you, if you are a strategic partner in your clients, then it allows you to, you're a part of their team. They need you. And it's not just to make stuff look good or to, you know what I mean? You, you don't just have a factory mentality. You are the whole manufacturing company, I think. So totally off topic. But anyway, so you introduced me to Don Miller and he had, um, this morning I was listening to his talk with Bob Goff, who's another uh, Christian author who, man, if you haven't read this book, you should really read it. It's called Love Does, D-O-E-S. Bob Goff, he just uh, is crazy. Like, I think you'll really like it. Have you ever heard of this man? I heard it because Emily just listened to a recent episode saying that Bob Goff was going to be on. So I haven't personally heard of him, but I've heard of him through the podcast. So I had read the book Love Does, but then I listened to the podcast today and he's super like, oh, you want to do this? Let's go do it. Like his kids wanted to do something like, I don't know if they were raising money for Africa or something, but he's like, okay, let's do it. And like, he doesn't say no to anything and he seems real spontaneous and he doesn't really seem like a planner, but you know what he talked about on that podcast? I don't know what number it is, but it's the one, I don't know, at the end of April is when that podcast came out the story brand podcast with Bob Goff. He said, I look at, I try to make decisions that are about the Bob Goff 10 years from now. So Scotty, you're Ooh, 30, 29 at the moment, 29. But when do you turn 30? July 31st. So, okay. So it's coming up. I'm not ready. Don't, don't speed it up any more than it needs to be right now, Diane. Hey, <laughs> my birthday is this week. And you know what? I think it just keeps getting better. I'll be 45. And I think that you can't, so that's a whole nother part of being like a designer is that we feel like we have to be so youthful. I feel like I'm pretty youthful at 45. Oh yeah. You're, you're a bubbly spirit. I feel like I'm going to ride into my prime into my thirties. Like, I feel like I'm just building up in like 30 to 40 is going to be like something incredible. I can't even put fathom at the moment, but it keeps getting better. Scotty, it doesn't go downhill at 40. Like <laughs> I really feel like it keeps getting better, but it, it is about perspective, right? It is. I don't feel like, um, it's like the downhills, you know, I'm not going to be relevant or anything like that. I don't think that that's the thing. But anyway, so Bob says he's 59 and he looks at the decisions he's going to be making. He says who he wants to be in 10 years from now. He makes decisions today that will get him to that spot. That's gold. I know if I had known this in my 20s, I probably wouldn't have snowboarded as much. I think probably I wouldn't have gotten in debt like I did. And so there's just all these things. I think, I don't know, it, it's what you, what you do with your time. And I mean, not that those things were bad because I absolutely love snowboarding and I loved what I did, but I didn't have a, a 10 year kind of plan. But it, if you look at Bob Goff, he doesn't really, it looks like he's just like, okay, let's go do something with Africa or let's do, I mean, he just looks, he, he just tries things. He's fine with failure, but he's just, totally fine but the decisions he makes are about what he wants to be like in 10 years that's already the biggest takeaway i think i've ever gotten from you in anything and i've you've given you've given me a lot too so no that's awesome because I, I i parallel that because i was football and messing up my entire body and taking on debt like literally that is paralleled to what you just said when i could have been like finding my people like there were some young kids at these conferences like high school students are fresh out of high school or early college kids 
who were at Crop Conference and Creative South, and I'm like, wow, you know, that's how you become like the Scott Beer Sex that you bring fires at such a young age of like finding your stride early on. And I can't help but be envious, but at the same time, everything happens when it's supposed to at whatever age or whatever event. Like I was supposed to go through those struggles and those shitty moments where my back was messed up or I was super depressed because now it like makes me uh, battle tested. I got scars, you know. But people wouldn't believe in you if you didn't have those struggles. Scott had his own struggles, right? I love Scott. He's one of my favorite people in the world. But he struggled. If you watch the Vimeo, I mean, his family was homeless, you know? So he had these other struggles. And he knew, uh, I think at 14, he didn't want to be, you know, he wanted to have a job. And he worked at McDonald's, right? That dude's got an edge to him like no one I've ever met before. Like just this mindset of mentality. It's special. But I think he he learned those things. He went through that valley early. Yeah. You know, and I think the valley is what helps us get to our peak. We can't just get to the we can't helicopter into the top of the mountain. And I think that's what people want. Right. Mm -hmm. But we we don't we can't do that. I think sometimes you're capable of getting a peak of that peak and seeing a little bit potential <laughs> of that future version of yourself. And that's what like really sets things on fire like going to conferences that's what let me see a little glimpse of what that peak could be and now it's like i'm looking for that next one and there, there's probably gonna be another valley in between there absolutely your life is full of those things it's just like waves in the ocean there's ebbs and flows there's high tide and there's low tide but that's what if everything was just high tide you know it, we wouldn't appreciate those other you know it's like yeah. i mean you're about to have a kid so there are going to be things that are going to take a back seat or there's going to be things that are, you know, that, that you didn't even plan for, but they will just be, it, it will be a struggle, but then there are also, after the struggle, there's just that amazing. Something you mentioned earlier is about time management and, you know, you as a professor, a freelancer, a speaker, a podcast host, an active AIGA member, uh, event co-organizer. You know, I could probably keep going. I could probably think of something. An amazing friend, lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations. But how do you find time in your day or week to balance all of these things? Because I'm, 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 I'm infamous for piling my plate high, and I have to say no. Are you good at saying no? Because I am not, and it gets me in trouble. But you seem to make it all work so well. I, I think it's a mirage. I think uh, I, it's that it doesn't always work. I mean, my house is a mess. That's where there's a curtain behind me and I need to vacuum. There's all kinds of things. I think I don't have kids. So that helps the people that I graduate. Those are my kids. I feel like those are the people that I invest in. You have a lot of kids. Then. <laughs> I birthed them in graphic design. That's what I say. They, they're all awesome. Like I'm still tight, especially that, that group from Flourish. Like I'm really, really tight with that class specifically. Yeah. And they are with you and you are hugely important to them. And I think, you know, I think that that's what you have. And I have reached out to you when you have had a podcast about something. And I was like, oh man, that hit me. Yeah. And those are the things that, to me, we need people need to remember to encourage you, right? People yeah. need to remember to reach out um, to to people that are making a difference in their lives. Because I think we just think that you're doing fine, you're just going at it, you're just pushing on. But it's the same way. I mean, I don't, I probably don't manage my time as well as I do. I do. My husband does say, at about seven, he'll be like, "It's time to get off the computer," you know. That's why I asked because I feel you and me are very parallel in things. And like to the outside world, it may think like, holy shit, like I am just on fire and I'm killing it. But behind the scenes, it's like it can't be perfect everywhere. And I get myself into trouble by trying to do too much, especially with Emily. And, you know, I'm pretty open about it. I, I've friends don't call as much as they used to because I get so obsessed with this dream and I missed family functions for a while. And, you know, I, as much perfect as it seems, things are perfect in life it's not always that case is there any other adversity you face by you know being so involved with so many things so i don't get to see my parents as much so are they in alabama no they live outside of athens georgia so my parents went to georgia i went to auburn my whole family i'm always on the outside john is a alabama fan so 
I never quite fit in. But so my parents are about eight hours away and I've had, it's always been about uh, once a year, I go home at Christmas and that's it. And so that's really, I mean, my mom comes to my show every week, so she gets to see me. Um, and I talk to her every day, but it's not, it's not the same, I think. And so I feel like I've had to really sacrifice, but it is, it's like you're sacrificing for that dream, but who else does, who else feeds off of this dream? Who else is affected? Yeah. Yeah. It's not really Emily. So that's why I think that Bob Goff, he has a new book out and I think he talks about some of this and his wife is named Maria and he, she, um, I think she said like a help wanted sign one time out on the front lawn. And it was like for a husband, you know, help wanted. I needed, And I don't know if that's exactly what it was, but that's what I heard it to be today. And it was like, whoa, it just really, you know, brought it. And he's like, if it's not working for Maria, then it's not working for me. And so he he's kind of been able to adjust his life. And I think that that's the same way with Emily. Mm hmm with your kids that you have, you know, it, it does have to work. And so John, I try to put my phone on the charger when I, you know, when we watch TV or Netflix or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and something I have to like constantly remind myself last year was like, definitely what really opened my eyes is, is you get so focused on building your empire that you may turn around and realize there's no one that you can share it with. And like last year it was a, a punch to the face, like, holy crap, I'm building something. I'm traveling all the time. I'm meeting all these people and I'm making a name for myself, but who am I going to like celebrate anything with when there's no one there? And you know, that terrifies me now. So like, that's what really gets my ass in gear and with the help of my wife. But you know, that's what scared me. So I, I just appreciate someone else who can like kick butt and have a balanced life. Yeah, well, we'll see. I, I think it's a struggle all the time because you still have the dream and you still are, you know, I mean, now you have a new life you're trying to provide for. I mean, there's, it's extra stresses. So how does that, you know, how does making money trump, and this happens to so many people, how does making money trump spending time with your kid? Like, how does, that shouldn't be a correlate. I mean, there it shouldn't trump spending time with your kids. Or your wife or my husband or whatever. I know. And at times it's like, Emily's just like, hey, we need X amount of money. So I feel it, I feel like I'm okay if I have like her green light given to me on certain things, but who knows what it's all about adapting. And what I'm learning is the ability to say no lately, especially with the kid coming up, it's been making it so much easier. It's like, man, I can't, I can't take on this project. You're not paid. I can't get paid an exposure right now. You know, Emily doesn't get maternity leave. So like I'm grinding so she can get the 12 weeks she deserves. So it's like saying no to this is so much easier than it was before. And yeah, I, I, do you have a hard time saying no? Cause I, that's why my plate's always so high and I'm always stressed out and getting gray hairs at 29 years old. <laughs> man, I got gray hairs at 14. I got to be, buddy. <laughs> Um, spring break, ninth grade, I found my first gray hair. What? I do not have blonde hair. This is all from a box, except I go to the salon to do it. But it, I have dark, dark, dark hair. Really? Yeah. I need to dig in the old Diane ar archives. I need to see that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all dark hair. Anyway, you won't even look like me, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> with but I think it's about communicating with Emily. So if Emily needs this, then you have to com keep the communication open. Definitely. I think that's the same way with John. So I've really been trying to not use my phone or not, you know, if that's what helps him to feel better, then I need to recognize that. That's, that's awesome. Let's, let's, let's kind of divert to that. Cause I, I don't want to make it about me as well, but something I admire about you is that you are always experimenting. Like you were always doing something different, whether uh, from your business end, your marketing end, switching different platforms because it'll be a better user experience or switching up different styles that you do for your art and your creating. Like you do almost everything or you've tried almost everything. And I'm a big fan of that because I believe we should always continue to dip our toes, experiment. We don't have to live this hyper curated life and play by Instagram's rules. Like we can just do what resonates with us. You never know when you're going to find one new thing that could totally be meshed into something else. Like for me, it was illustrations and I found lettering, but now what's the next way I can push that to the next level. Then how important is it for anyone, especially you to be curious and constantly experiment with new techniques, styles, or mediums? 
So I think it's incredibly important. I think for me as a professor, I have to do that. If I stop doing that as a professor, then I'm stopping being relevant for my students because I need to know what UX, UI, what people are doing in that. And so that's where these connections come in, where Peter Del Tondo can come to my class virtually or um, Amir can come to my class and talk about branding and um, response and branding. branding. Yeah. Yes. I think I don't know about those things, but if, if I can't say, Hey, I don't know this, but somebody else does. And then have questions and conversations with these people. That's how you grow. And so one of the things with the sabbatical is that I really want to be an illustrator. I am not there yet. I don't feel like I could call myself an illustrator yet. You draw a mean beaver. I, yeah, I can draw I can draw a beaver and I was giving away the bird at Creative South. I don't know if you got any of my little I, birds. I didn't but. get anything. I just I had to say this cuz your your talk <laughs> your talk at WMC Fest this was the best. So Diane uh was one of the speakers at WMC Fest and her slides, you know, kind of giving me a backstory of it what had tons of beaver illustrations because it had a nice beaver theme and a metaphor and how she tied it into us as creatives. And she, she just told me one day, Scotty, I have to show you my beavers. <laughs> and, <I'm, laughs> and it was, it was too funny, but um, me, I have a mind that goes to the worst places possible at every kind of moment. So sorry, Diane, I put you on the spot on that. That was too funny. I'll send you one of the images so that people can see one of the beavers. But I was so excited because I was illustrating and did these beavers in watercolor. I knew what it sounded like, but I think that's also <laughs> where it's fun because I'm not going to cuss or say anything. And so then it's like when I say, oh, I want to show you my beavers. I mean, your face went like white and it was like, I don't know what she just said. I don't think she said that. And I'm a dirt ball too. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so funny because it's just, it's that's such a Diane thing. Like just always making someone laugh, even if it's unintentional, because you're so excited. But anyway, sorry, I totally interrupted you. But illustrations, beavers, birds, new skills, sabbatical. So one of the things I faced that has been a valley for me in the sabbatical is that I the deep dive is really hard. It's because you have to get through all that failure. And so it's been really hard for me. And so I had this one, I'll show you this and I can send her to you. Her name's Paula. I had to write her name on the back. Hey girl. Yeah. So, but it's like a plant head and then just, uh, I drew a body and then drew legs and whatever, but it's collage. So it's like one, two, three, four, five pieces of paper. And which is, I think that's where I like to work. Um, it's nothing. I'm sure people would be like, Oh gosh. For, anyway, whatever. It's my inner voice not being nice to myself. Yeah, quit it, inner Diane. <laughs> the mean Diane. Um, so anyway, I I really liked that that kind of feel. I like the collage, being able to build something up. Um, it makes it so that if I do fail, I can just cut it out. So it I don't feel like it's as much of a failure, right? Um, so I like that style and I've done that for clients, uh, with like Christmas cards or other illustrations that I've done. And I, I feel like that's one of the things that I'll be able to give, but I had hit a path in where I was in this sabbatical and I knew I needed to come up with so many whatever's, um, illustrations that were in a series. And I just hit, I only have made Paula. I got to come up with nine more Paula's friends. By when is there an end date, like sense of urgency? So I think that was one of my other problems is that I didn't have a deadline. And so when I'm in school and I'm teaching, I know I have to have this stuff understood or learned about, or even when I'm going to interview somebody, I need to learn enough about it. So I don't look like an idiot on the other side of the microphone. It takes work for that. <laughs> yeah. But it's a deadline, right? And so it's a quit, a, a clear deadline of what I need to do. And some people I have to prepare more for and some people I don't. And you know that struggle. So, but I just hit it with Paula. I think being curious is really important. You can't be afraid. And that was all I was. I was just afraid of not being able to make anything or not being able to go forward. Or I don't really do good with bodies. Like her body's not that great. I mean, but it's just, I need to just keep going. I'll get better if I just work on it. How do you battle being afraid? Man, I shut down. So I just completely was like, okay, I'm just going to make money. I've got to do this client project. And then I just put a priority to the client work and make it. And then I'm doing PowerPoint. So this is not something that's going in my, you know, 
portfolio. This is just making money. Your PowerPoint portfolio. (laughs) Right. This is just making money. But I put that as a priority. And, and, you know, it was, I didn't know PowerPoint. I had never used PowerPoint. Like I'm an anti PowerPoint girl. I mean, I never use Keynote. I make my slide decks in InDesign. Like that's how I roll. But it's been good. So I was like, I somehow in my mind made it okay. Oh, well, you know, you're learning something new. You're doing okay. So I feel like an addict, like um, not facing the situation. But I, you know, you really talk about this getting up early and putting in time before you go to work. So with a sabbatical, you don't have to go to work, right? But what I need to do is, is like really let Paula's friends be a priority. (laughs) I love that. I think that that's where it is with Emily and John too. It's making that time a priority. Being intentional. Yeah. And I feel, I don't know why I'm scared. I, I guess I'm afraid of failure. I mean, I have, it's been a really battle for me. Like I want to be an illustrator so bad, but I am not willing to do the work. I feel like that's going to hit home with a lot of people here though. But that's where it is. So it's like paying for your gym membership, thinking you're going to get skinny if you never go to the gym. Well, I paid for Skillshare. Well, do you use it? And those are shallow dives, right? But you you need to it, maybe you find something and then go deeper, hunt more, go get a book or do you know find something else, find somebody else to learn from. And I think that that's where, like Jason Craig, he said he would let me shadow him for a day. Have I been? No, but I haven't gone to see my parents. So as soon as I, because he lives pretty close to them, so. I just need to do it. I don't know why I have. So maybe this is helping me because I'll put my feet to the fire. A little public accountability. Exactly. And I know you'll hold my feet to the fire. Oh, yeah. They'll be like, hey, how's Paula's friends? (laughs) Yeah, you can't let Paula just be solo dolo in life. I know. she's, She's a cute girl. What's the next one then? Just publicly right here what's the next vision of the next one so i have i have some cut out so there's she has some girlfriends first so it's like these um you know those shrubs that are like this they're like i don't know it's like box i don't know what they're called i'm not a I should know what they are, but they like little bitty and you can kind of shape them. And so it's like this and she, you know how like girls will put a bun and then another bun. That's her next friend. I don't know what she looks like, but she has that for hair. And I have some more already cut out. The, the, the plants are there. What trips me out is you're scared to fail in illustrations, but you do things that I feel are way harder, like show up and teach our future generation and do over 200 plus podcast episodes, which all of this is way harder putting yourself out there. Do you, do you see where I'm like, my perception is like on the outside looking in, I feel like you're doing things that are way harder than this little side project. But for me, that stuff's like, oh, I've never worried about being an idiot. Like, I know I'm not the smartest. I, I, <laughs> I've i always been kind of, I don't know. I'm a lot for some people, right? <laughs> you know, it's hard to kind of take me in sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's part of the DNA and the experience of Diane, which is like why everybody loves Diane from where I'm sitting. Thank you. Um, but so <laughs> my husband does not think I'm funny at all. Like I'm like, oh man, my kids think I'm funny and I think I'm okay. Funny. I have some good analogies about bras and tights yeah. and you know, there's all kinds of things that I try to make it so that it's relatable, but my husband's hilarious. He'll say things just off the blue that I can't even think one time, I guess I was being mean to him and he's like, you know, you should make your own t-shirt. I'm going to make it for you and I'll, I'll wear it. My wife's so mean, she scares green beans. And then there'll be like a little green pooping out like, cause he's so afraid right then. And I'm like, but he rhymes a lot. Like he's, I don't know, maybe that's not funny, but it was hilarious to me. Well, I think you're hilarious. And I know everybody <laughs> in the community does, especially the beaver comment. Like that is a true Diane thing, you know? And so I, I like the Diane experience and that's why you're on the show because I think other people will like the Diane experience and get a lot from this. So, I mean, hopefully we can get some accountability in you to finish this project and give her some homegirls. 
so I guess it's just not, it's not hard for me to do that stuff, to be out there and not, I don't really care. I mean, I care what people think, but I also am like, well, it's just me. And it, I know not everybody's going to like me. You know, I think. Yeah. You're, you're not pizza. Not everyone's going to like you. Yeah. You know? Man, that was the best. When you said that, that whole analogy with pizza really hit home. Can't make everyone happy. You are not pizza. Let me say it at least right. That's right. And you can't, we can't, but so it doesn't, it's not a stretch for me to do the pot. I mean, it's a stretch time wise. It's a stretch, you know, other sometimes, you know what it's like just to try to come up with questions and to, it, it's just a challenge. I'm terrified each episode I hitch publish that. What if someone hates this or like, what if I did a bad job or what if I get another one star review or what if I get this anonymous email, someone telling me I'm trying too hard. You should just go back to drawing. You know, I'm scared of getting those each time I hit publish. So like, I, I'm scared to fail with this every time. But you know what that says, Scotty, is that you're not riding the fence. And I think I've never gotten those emails or maybe they just go straight to my spam. I don't know. Um, but I've never, nobody's ever been mean to me. So maybe I'm not doing something. Maybe I'm riding the fence too hard and I'm not afraid. I I love that you get, and Dustin would tell you that too, you know, getting a one-star review means that you're doing something. You're pushing it to that limit. And man, I, oh my goodness, you're trying too hard? Whatever. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that one's still like, you can get all the good things in the world said to you, but like that, that one time someone just, totally tears your world it's it's crazy one negative outweighs like a hundred positives you know it's crazy yeah and i'm a sensitive person i always wanted to be pizza growing up like i always want people to like me because i'm a people person extroverted and if i don't have like a connection with someone it's like what did i do what how can i fix this you know like it's weird i don't like that quality i don't like that quality about being a, a people pleaser it's hard it's hard not to be but just think of all the people you're able to touch and being able to help them compared to you being alone in your room, just drawing right now, at least you're out there and you've touched so many people that sounds sort of bad, but you've impacted so many more people. Um, <laughs> the Diane past- experience, everyone, <laughs> <laughs> but you've impacted so many more people than you have um, the negative, it, maybe the negatives are things that you just keep going. And maybe that was cause maybe you were bullied a little bit as a kid, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's still, there's still that, that everybody has that little inner me. It's a little inner fourth grader that runs rampant, you know, from time to time. And I just have to shut him up, but everybody has that little inner critic. Like you just said a little bit ago, that inner Diane, the mean Diane was like talking, you know, so everybody has that. I'm getting better and more aware of it. So like that one comment doesn't bother me as much anymore, but man, it's still right there lingering as ammo for that inner Scotty to throw at me. But I guess I think that's where, so in February, my friend Kim Pinella and I did this thing called Love on Designers. And I wanted exactly that because people forget that you are real also. Like they, you do have this, um, mentality of I'm going to keep pushing through and you have the super positive, but I know you struggle too. And you've shared that there's cracks in the armor. There's cracks in the armor for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank goodness, because you're not perfect because that's how you're able to be relatable. And I love that you've shared that stuff to me when you go out and, and so Love on designers can be any time, but it's just that somebody reaches out to you. So we kind of split it up. Each week was supposed to be something else. I can't even remember what the fourth week was, but the first week was reach out to somebody, you know, encourage somebody who you've seen um, doing new things. And then the next week was um, reach out to a mentor. And then the third week was do something for yourself, right? Love on yourself. Because a lot of times we do so much for other people. We're not taking time for us. And then I don't remember what the fourth week was, but it was, I'm sure it was great. I think that's going to be the theme in the takeaway, the call to action at the end of this episode, honestly, because I'm, I'm digging where this is going. So we're, we're going to, we're going to put that out there. But you need, you need, you need encouragement just as much as everybody else. People appreciate being a people. Yeah. Yeah. You encourage. And if it, you're right, that one bad comment still lingers can like empty the bucket that you've already had filled from other people. It's like one little thing can empty it. It sucks. 
But I have people like you who help fill it up a lot quicker. Good. Fill each other's buckets. (laughs) Title. That's right. That's right. All right. Before we go into rapid fire, what's one piece of advice you'd give to a creative at any stage of life who struggles starting or sticking with it? I guess it's a something I would tell myself right now is that I just I need to practice. And the more I practice, you look at Scott Biersack or Bob or you um, or so many people like my friend Kim, like if you look at what their posts look like in the beginning, they weren't great. And then but the daily practice, they get better. And I think you get you get more in tune with with your tools and whether they're on the ends of your hands or if they're connected to a a mouse or a Wacom tablet or iPad, whatever. I just feel like you need to, I tell my students they need to date illustrator, right? They're like, I don't like this program and I'm, or they don't like InDesign or whatever. And I'm like, but you need to date it. You need to spend time with this thing, whatever it is. And so just like me with Paula, I need to date Paula. Cause you don't know how, that 10th one, Irene, how awesome she can become because all the things you learn through making Paula and then uh, the bun bun girl and everything else. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's what her name is. Bun bun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that definitely hits home. And, and especially if you do date something, maybe the date isn't always going to work where you actually marry it. You know, for me, I used to date tattoo design. I thought I was going to be a tattoo designer. I thought I was going to marry that field and you know it didn't but it taught me how to like draw and do other things or the t-shirt game i ran a t-shirt business and i dated that for four years and thought it was a long-term marriage and it definitely wasn't but every everything i dated helped me get to you know the thing that i'm married to now is it so i'm I'm married to a lot of different things does that sound bad too no i love that i because again you like sister um... wives that show sister (laughs) (laughs) so so, you know, one thing I think, have you ever talked to Joe Bosack? No, I've heard the name. You got to talk to him. He um, has been a designer for the same length as me, but he's really focused on college, uh, redoing college teams or college. Um, he's done, I think, some Nash, uh, NFL things as well. But you have to be able to pivot. It's not, you can't design the same way you designed 20 years ago. You have to be able to pivot with trends and with the times and with what's going on. So I think it's good if you date lots of things. Now you do need to date some things longer, right? Like you really commit to some, it's not like you're just going to the gym once a, once a week, right? You make a long-term commitment to that. And it's not like you're with Emily. It's not like with your baby, with your son, right? It's a little boy. Mm-hmm. A little Scotty Dougie the third. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. SD? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> SD card? <laughs> yeah, Go on. No, that's Go what on. I thought. Anyway, it, but you're not going to just put in a little bit of time every week with him. You're going to put in a lot of time with him, and it's going to be a long-term thing. But he might have a friend that comes in just for a sm- small period of your life. It doesn't mean that that you don't give it all out to his friend. You know, it just it might not last that long. But I think it's good. You can't just have one friend. You and Emily can't be everything for each other. Same way with design. You can't just have one thing because if you do, then you won't last because you will have been run out when the trend rolls through. I think that's that's a good thing. Yeah, dip your toes and try different things, date different things. But when you're dating it, give you give it all you have, you know, to find out if it is for you or if it's going to lead you to the next thing. So I think that's that's. Perfect. Someone wants to start a a side project, start calligraphy. Don't half-ass it. Put in 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day religiously. Write your grocery lists. Write anything you can find around. Write everyone's name. I I practice. Honestly, I write swear words at work when I'm just really annoyed. I'll write the F-bomb just like super pretty and I'll put it on. Funny story. I, I filled up a whole sheet one time when I started new and somebody needed a sheet of paper like hey can i grab this scratch piece of paper they flipped it over and they all thought it was really funny but um you know just practice all the time so give it all you got to whatever you're dating at that moment trying to sum up sum it up but tangents yeah exactly (laughs) i'm with you all right rapid fire questions let's wrap this up if you were on death row which i hope you never would because you are diane and that would be a, a crime what would your last slice of pizza be so I know you don't like Italian pizza, but I got to go to Italy and I really like thin, thin, thin crust because it's like pe- 
uh, pie crust. Yeah. So I really like just I like just plain tomatoes, like Roma tomatoes thin, because to be honest, the cheese, cheese and me aren't great friends. I like cheese to eat it, but it doesn't like me. So you like a margarita pizza? Yeah, maybe so. I usually when we eat pizza, I tear off all the cheese and I just eat the tomato sauce and the crust. Oh, man. When we have pizza together, can I just have your cheese? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I give it to my dog or John sometimes. But absolutely. I can be your cheese supplier. Yes. OK. Deal. Deal. OK. Um, Script, serif or sans serif. That's right, Scotty. Thanks for pointing that out. Anyway, that's one of my pet peeves is it's when people say San or anyway, it's not S-A-N, people. It's S-A-N-S. She called me out on my uh, <laughs> on my spelling. I'm the king of typos. Like if you haven't followed me on Twitter or my Instagram uh, stories or anything like that, I spell so many things wrong, but I'm moving at like 100 miles per hour. I, no, you're the only one who's ever called me out on that. So thank you. It is fixed right now for when I use it for the next guest. But I, but I hopefully did it lovingly. Oh yeah. I mean, I was like, hey man. From a from a coaching aspect, you know. Right. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want you to go out there with you know your pants down. Yeah. Right. Sans serif. So. I'm the kind of person who's gonna say you have something in your nose or something in your teeth, and I want you to do that to me so none of us look dumb. So thank you, thank you. Okay, so, and my answer is sans serif, uh, just because it's flexible, and I know I love scripts, but, and I know you're a script, but I'm definitely not a serif, so I just like, so I always ask, a, um, in an interview, when I was a designer working, we would ask, what finger would you be and why? So, Scotty, you answer that. Oh. Rapid fire, buddy. <laughs> Oh my God, I immediately just go to the middle finger because I just want to say fuck off if you don't like what I'm doing. But um, honestly, probably a thumbs up because I want to give encouragement to people. Okay. All right. So um, so I'm also a thumb. And the reason I'm a thumb is because we're workers, right? We, uh, we help. We help all, all the other fingers. We're team players. We're strong. But without us, we the hand kind of is lost, right? Yeah. So we're we're... Um, we are encouragers. I really like the encourager one, but anyway, so that was one. What did the middle finger mean? Do you remember that one? Does anybody say that in a, in a interview? Yes, oh my in God. You don't say that yes. in an interview. I know. So this really dicky guy said that one time and I was like, holy moly, we're looking for an art director. And he was like, well, I think I'd be the middle finger and you should know why. And I'm like, and here's the door, you know? Whoa. Wow. Mine, I was just kidding. Because I'm, I'm trying to be pizza. Wow. You don't do that. Well, but he didn't get, he didn't get the job. But then a, a lady said she would be the pinky. And if you look, I mean, both of my pinkies are, are broken. Mine, too. Mine, too. Look at that one. This Yeah, this one's good, though. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Mine's not. See how I know people can't see, but I, <laughs> somebody ran over it on a snowboard. I was stopped Whoa. and somebody when I was snowboarding anyway. And so she wanted to be a pinky. And I was like, a pinky? Really? Why? And she's like, well, I'm delicate and I'm, um, I'm, I like ballet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are not going to work as an art director. Like it really does tell you what we needed a pointer. We need somebody who was a leader, somebody who could delegate. But my, uh, one of my best friends, Debbie, she was the ring finger on your left hand. She was the editor, the writer. Okay. And I was like, Ooh, Debbie, why? And she's like, because it's the closest thing to your heart. So that's the shortest vein. And I was like, Oh, I would have said so something cool. like it's the ring finger. So that means you're committed. But that's why we wear it on that hand. Yeah. Right? Okay. Short because it's I, closest to our heart. Just learn something new. Speaking of fingers, what's your favorite typeface? <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go with Gotham. I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, I just like it. It's pretty round. All right. How do you recharge when you unplug? Um, I love to mow. I have Gross. four acres. Oh my gosh, I love it. It is like riding. I have a zero turn mower that my husband fixed. His aunt Mona broke it and my husband can fix anything. It's a zero turn mower. He has it going super fast. It's a, I wear two sports bras because I have a lot of holes in my yard, but I get to go and make all kinds of crazy patterns. It is the best. 
So mowing and I listen to podcasts or listen to books or whatever while I'm mowing and it's fan freaking fantastic. Awesome. Well, last question. Where can people go to find you online as well as where can people go to find your illustration journey? Okay. So uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and everything at, at design recharge. You can find me at rechargingyou.com. And then if you want to follow the illustration journey, which I haven't posted anything from, but I will, I'll get back to making Paula's friends at C. Cause my first name starts with a C Diane gives <laughs> your face. And there's no dot. I know there are lots of things. Did you know? I don't capitalize my name. I haven't capitalized it since I was in, in with 10th grade so it's c diane gives.com do you want me to tell you what it is yes tell everybody right now so so if this is your name i am i'm i'm sure it's beautiful on you but it does not fit me it's constance and so in first grade i was called consonant you know and then as you get older const uh, constipated and then with diane diarrhea so it was like you know uh. never really yeah. So not that I ever, I never went by Constance. I don't know why my dad did that to me. You are a, you are a Diane. I know. Absolutely. Diane all the way, but see Diane Gibbs is the handle on Instagram. Diane, thank you so much. This didn't even feel like an interview. This just felt like a normal conversation that like we would always have when we connect. So thank you so much for being open, honest, vulnerable, and just for being an awesome human we all appreciate you and everything you do for us in the creative community because there's never one person that you're not trying to make an impact on and that's what makes you special so thank you thank you scotty because you really you your journey has made such a difference in my life so thank you for sharing and being honest and open awesome well i can't wait for this one to come out we will keep in touch i'm sure plenty of times i'll be on design recharge here soon so we'll talk again here so love you have an awesome day We'll keep in touch. Okay, love you too. Bye. Whew. Diane Gibbs, everyone. This woman has made a massive impact on me and so many other creatives out there who tend to get in their own way. Not only has she given me countless opportunities, but... She's helped me get out of some really dark places like I talk about in episode 25 way back in 2017 called Dealing with Creative Funks and Feeling Invisible. I was at one of my lowest points in my creative career as Perspective Collective. I'd lost, depressed, doubting every ounce of my creative abilities and you know she pulled me out of such a dark place and I know she's done that with so many other people. I can't recommend enough checking out her work and her design recharge show please don't hesitate to reach out and connect with her if you found value in what she said today. I know she'd appreciate it. Diane, you are the shit, and I absolutely love you. Thank you for everything. Moving on to this week's dose of inspiration, this one goes out to Jake Givens on Instagram. Now, Jake's been a huge supporter of the show, and I just happened to glance at his work uh, after he tagged the show uh, several times and his stories and just sharing it with people, and I'm not going to lie, I was highly impressed. He's quite the wizard with script and flexes his analog, procreate, and vectoring skills on his vibrant and colorful feed. If you're a script junkie and looking for someone to study, then follow Jake. He's definitely that dude you should be following. I recommend it. Next, I want to talk about the Facebook community. If you're looking for accountability, a place to share your work, people to collaborate with, give and receive solid feedback, get access to resources that'll elevate your creative game, then I encourage you to check out the Perspective-Collective Facebook group. We have a thriving community building right now, and we'd love to have you be a part of the family. And it's so dope to see everybody pitch in, share feedback on each other's work. There's people that are building side projects and collaborating now and helping each other have thriving businesses. It's, oh my God, this shit is just so beautiful to watch grow and it's already surpassing any expectations I ever had for it. So I would love for you to be a part of the family. Again, that's on Facebook at The Perspective Dash Collective. If you're enjoying what you hear and want to support the growth of the show, I have three ways you can make that happen. The first is by becoming a backer at patreon.com slash perspective podcast. Not only you can donate with as little as much as your weekly cup of coffee, but I do my best to hook you up with some rewards so it's a win-win and I'm always open to feedback on this of how I can provide even more value to you. 
The second way to support the show is for you crypto junkies out there. In the show notes for each episode, I'll have addresses for Bitcoin, Ether, or Litecoin donations if you'd rather go that route. And finally, you can leave a ratings and review over on Apple Podcasts, aka iTunes. It's Apple Podcasts now, so I got to get it right. It not only helps the show get discovered, but it gives me an opportunity to give you a nice little thank you plug like this week's rating and review. This one comes from Kel Design, and it's titled Listener Recommended, Listener Approved. And do, and do what she says, or he, I'm not sure who it is. They say, go subscribe right now. Scotty's heart to help creators resonates through the Perspective Podcast from intro to rapid fire. His back and forth with guests is natural and unhindered and entertaining to listen to. He seeks insight and value while constructing a thriving community with his guests and his listeners. This is a podcast for every creative at any stage of the process. The audio is always top notch and the content never disappoints. Thanks for cranking out the stellar work, Scotty. Thank you so much. It means the world to me being able to read that off the show and, and in turn getting to thank you publicly and you know giving you the spotlight for a second. So I sincerely appreciate anybody who's ever left a ratings, a review and do what they say. Go subscribe, damn it. And as I wrap things up, I want to give a huge thanks to my homegirl, Anya Brennan, for making this episode sound so good. And a huge thanks to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. Check them out at SoundCloud or on Instagram at B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as you finish off your week strong, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. You got this.